Welcome to Vetlex. I am going to discuss the anatomy of Oscoxy of dog. Oscoxy consists of right and left hip bones, and these both hip bones are joined at symphysis pelvis. The symphysis pelvis is an immovable joint which is formed between these two hip bones. Each hip bone further contains three flat bones, and these are ilium, ischium, and pubis. First, I am going to discuss the anatomy of Ilium. Ilium is the largest and most cranial part of oscoxy of dog. It is roughly triangular in shape and contains two surfaces and three borders. First one is the lateral surface which is concave cranially while if we move caudally it is uh, slightly flat. The lateral surface of ilium is also known as gluteal surface due to the presence of middle gluteal muscle and deep gluteal muscle. Now, the med medial surface of ilium is nearly flat and it contains an auricular surface at its middle region and this auricular surface actually forms an articulation between the sacrum and ilium bone. Actually, at the dorsal aspect of oscoxy of dog, there is sacrum bone which is the actually the fused sacral vertebra of dog. So uh, this auricular surface which is rough surface at the middle medial aspect of ilium bone forms articulation with the sacral vertebra of dog. At the ventromedial region of ilium there is a line which is known as arcuate line and this arcuate line extends between the auricular surface up to the iliopubic eminence. This is the iliopubic eminence and I will discuss it in the section of pubis. So this arcuate line is present at the ventromedial region of ilium. This is the ventromedial region as this is the ventral aspect of ilium and this is the medial uh, aspect of ilium. So at ventromedial region there is an arcuate line which, uh, which is, starts from this auricular surface. Now let's talk about the borders of ilium. First one is the cranial border or this cranial border is also known as crest of ilium. This cranial border is in the form of an arc and it is more thick on the dorsal side than on its ventral side. So this is the dorsal side of uh, iliac crest and this is the ventral aspect. So you can see that it is more thick on its dorsal side than on its ventral side. If we talk about the ventral border of ilium then it contains two spines and these are cranial ventral iliac spine and caudal ventral iliac spine. These spines are not much visible in this picture. So here we have uh, spines. One is the cranial ventral iliac spine as it is present on the ventral border and other is the caudal ventral iliac spine. The cranial ventral iliac spine is the angle of junction between the iliac crest and this ventral border. The rest of the ventral border is concave in shape. As you can see here, it is concave. This ventral border is concave uh, while cranially it contains two spines. One is the cranial ventral iliac spine and other is the caudal ventral iliac spine. If we talk about the dorsal border of ilium, then it is thick, broad and massive as you can see in the picture. So it is thick, thicker than the ventral border of ilium and it also contains two spines and these are called cranial dorsal iliac spine and caudal dorsal iliac spine. The cranial dorsal iliac spine is the angle of junction between the uh, cranial border of ilium and the dorsal border of ilium. The rest of the dorsal border of ilium uh, forms greater ischiatic notch up to the ischiatic spine. This is the ischiatic spine and it is the portion of uh, ischium and I will discuss it in the ischium. So up to this isch, uh, isch, ischiatic spine there is a there is a notch known as greater ischiatic notch. Now the cranial dorsal iliac spine and caudal dorsal iliac spine present on the dorsal border of ilium are known as tuber saccharelle while the cranial ventral iliac spine and caudal ventral iliac spine present on the ventral border of uh, ilium are known as tuber coxae. This was all about ilium bone. So 
uh, ileum contains two surfaces one is the lateral surface other is the medial surface it contains three borders cranial border dorsal border and ventral border and on dorsal border it contains greater sciatic notch it forms the greater sciatic notch uh, which extends between the caudal dorsal iliac spine up to the sciatic spine now let's talk about ischium which is a quadrilateral plate and is present behind the pubis this is the pubis and it is present behind pubis and it forms most part of the pelvic floor it contains two surfaces one is the dorsal surface and other is the ventral surface dorsal surface is concave and smooth while ventral surface is slightly convex further it contains four borders one is the anterior border anterior border other is the posterior border third one is the lateral border and fourth is the medial border so it contains two surfaces and four borders further it contains a body a table and this is the ramus of ischium so the ischium is thin and concave and it forms the posterior boundary of obturator foramen this is the obturator foramen so this anterior border is forming the posterior boundary of this obturator foramen then we have posterior border of ischium this posterior border of ischium is thick and it forms ischial ischial arc with the adjacent bone so it is forming this ischial arc with its adjacent bone on the lateral aspect of this posterior border of ischium there is a tuberosity called ischial tuberosity and this ischial tuberosity is large and hook like on its lateral aspect while on its medial aspect it is rounded this is the medial aspect of this ischial tuberosity so it is round at the at its medial aspect while it is large at its lateral aspect position of this ischial tuberosity is the caudolateral aspect of is ischium bone now on the lateral side of this tuberosity there is sac uh, there is attachment for sacrotuberous ligament while on its medial aspect on the medial side of this tuberosity there are attachments for the crest of penis and muscles that surround the penis third border of the ischium is the lateral border which extends from the ischiatic spine up to the ischia ischial tuberosity so this lateral border of ischium forms lesser ischiatic notch which is actually present between the ischiatic spine and ischial tuberosity the fourth border of ischium which is known as medial border joins with the similar part of adjacent bone to forms symphysis pelvis the body of ischium is present just lateral to the obturator foramen this is obturator foramen and this is the body of ischium and this body of ischium contains ischiatic spine and lesser ischiatic notch this ischiatic spine is a rounded crest which is present just dorsal to the acetabulum this is the acetabulum here this is the acetabulum so just dorsal to the acetabulum this rounded crest known as ischiatic spine is present and this ischiatic spine is the part of body of ischium this ischiatic spine is the point where both ilium and ischium meet and cranial to this ischiatic spine we have greater ischiatic notch while caudal to this spine we have lesser ischiatic notch the ischiatic ramus is thin and wide at its medial part cranially it meets with the pubis pubis or pubic bone while laterally it contains obturator foramen the ischiatic table is flat and at its dorsal aspect internal obturator muscle originates while on its ventral aspect its ventral aspect external obturator muscle and quadratus femoris muscles originate now this foramen foramen is known as obturator foramen because it is covered or closed by external and internal obturator muscles so we called it call it obturator foramen this was all about ischium now let's talk about pubis pubis is a small bone which is a triangular plate 
and is present at the entire medial aspect of pelvic floor this is the pelvic floor and this is the pubis bone so it is present at the entire medial aspect of pelvic floor this is the anterior aspect and this is the medial aspect so this triangular plate or pubic bone is present at the entire medial aspect of pelvic floor and it contains two surfaces one is the dorsal surface and other is the ventral surface the dorsal surface of pubis is smooth while the ventral surface is rough and slightly convex the pubic symphysis is formed at a point where two pubic bones combine or meet and this pubic symphysis helps in the formation of pelvic symphysis pubis contains a body which is present just cranial to the obturator foramen this is the body of pubis and two rami and these are cranial ramus and caudal ramus the cranial ramus extends from the body this is the body and this is the ramus so the cranial ramus extends from the body of pubis to the ilium and finally it enters in the formation of acetabulum on the other hand the caudal ramus fuses with the ischial ramus this is the caudal ramus so it fuses with the ischial ramus at the middle at its middle point to form the pelvic symphysis at the entire medial aspect of pubis this is the anterior aspect and it is the medial aspect so at the entire medial aspect of pubis there is a tubercle known as pelvic tubercle on the craniolateral aspect of pubis iliopubic eminence is present so here we have iliopubic eminence on the craniolateral aspect while at the entire medial aspect we have pelvic tubercle now a rough area between the ilio on the cranial border of pubis is present between the iliopubic eminence and pelvic uh, tubercle and this rough border is known as pectin and this pectin is actually uh, the point where abdominal muscles attach by the help of prepubic tendon so at the cranial border of pubis between the iliopubic eminence and pelvic tubercle there is a rough area known as pectin and this and this pectin is the site of attachment of abdominal muscles and we have already studied in the section of ilium that between the iliopubic eminence and auricular surface there is a arcuate line so arcuate line is present between the auricular surface and iliopubic eminence while from the iliopubic eminence up to the iliac tubercle pel uh, up to, sorry up to the pelvic tubercle we have pectin this rough area is pectin now let's talk about acetabulum which is a cavity that receives the head of femur in order to form hip joint now the ilium ischium and pubis these three combinedly form the acetabulum and in case of young dogs this acetabulum also contains an acetabular bone which is absent in case of adult dogs at the caudo medial aspect of acetabulum acetabular notch is present this is the caudal view and this is the medial aspect so at the caudo medial aspect of acetabulum we have acetabular notch this is the acetabular notch another structure called acetabular fossa this fossa this is known as acetabular fossa is formed by the acetabular bone and ischium so they combine to form the acetabular fossa while at the caudo medial aspect we have acetabular notch this acetabular fossa is the point where ligament of head of femur attaches now let's talk about some terminologies which are used in the study of anatomy of os coxi and these are pelvic inlet pelvic outlet conjugate diameter and transverse diameter pelvic inlet is actually the cranial opening of the pelvic cavity this is the pelvic inlet and it is formed by the sacral vertebra of dog shaft of ilium and anterior border of pubis so this anterior border of pubis ilium shaft of ilium and uh, the sacral vertebra sacrum which is present at the dorsal aspect of the uh, os coxi of dog they combinedly form the pelvic inlet which is the cranial opening into the pelvic cavity next is the pelvic outlet the pelvic outlet is the caudal opening of the pelvic cavity 
and the pelvic outlet is formed by the coccygeal vertebrae ischial arc and ischial tuberosity this ischial tuberosity ischial arc and the coccygeal vertebra which is which are also present uh, just dorsal to the uh, uh, to the os coxy of dog these three bones combinedly form the pelvic outlet of dog the third point is the conjugate diameter which is the length between the sacrum to the cranial end of pubic symphysis this is the cranial end of pubic symphysis so the length of the pelvic cavity between the uh, cranial end of this uh, pubic symphysis up to the sacrum forms the conjugate diameter and fourth point is the transverse diameter which is the widest horizontal distance of the pelvic cavity so any widest uh, so this widest distance this is the horizontal uh, the horizontal distance widest horizontal distance of the pelvic cavity forms the transverse diameter